I hope I have had a wonderful week. We are getting closer and closer to getting into our new church, and we're hoping maybe by October we might be in there. So what we're going to do, we all need to be in prayer. We have committees. We have committees, 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 so we're going to use them. And what we're going to do, we're going to try to get the committees together. We'll have a dinner or something, and mainly the chairman of the committees. And also, I'm going to try to get all the Sunday school teachers together. And we're going to get our literature, and we're going to start lining things up for, for the first Sunday that we're going to be open. So we need to be in prayer that God will give us wisdom and discernment to bring it all together that we seamlessly move into the church and we have greeters at the doors. We show them how loving and friendly we are because we are. That's just the truth. We're a very loving church. And it will be a tremendous testimony to our community. And then that first Sunday, we're going to, that first Saturday, the next Saturday, we're going to do visitation. And that, I know everybody can't go to that, but you can sure pray for us as we go to it. And you know, there's nothing more powerful than praying Christians that Amen. focus on what we need. We need Amen. we need a few people to go out, and we need it all to be bathed in prayer. You know, for we've covered our area probably two or three times through the years. And uh, Eric and Renee and Lenita and I and Linda, we we filled up my van, and it worked out great. So we'll use our vehicles as much as we can. And if you want to come, you come on down. We'll go through a short scenario about what we're going to say to them, how we're going to invite them. We don't want to put any pressure on anybody. We just want love on everybody. So uh, you be in prayer about that because we're getting closer and closer. And we want everything to work to the glory of God. You know, it says in the book of Acts, and the Lord added to the church. So I'm not worried about us building the church. I just want us to be effective when we come together and look like we know what we're doing. So let's be in prayer about that. Let's open in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for this beautiful day, Lord. We thank you for this summertime where kids have been able to go swimming and have fun with their families and vacations and all those things. But now we are redirecting ourselves back towards school. Schools are open and back towards family time and those that are homeschooling. Father, we pray that you will bless all the schools in our area, that you will bless the teachers and all the administrations. Lord, that your hand of anointing will be upon each child, that they will be taught well, and that they would advance. And Lord, we know that uh, we live in a world that is in decline, but Lord, the church is not in decline. We want to be effective. We want to be smart. We want your wisdom in how we present ourselves to our community. So Father, fill us with love. Fill us with wisdom. Lead, guide, and direct each one of us to be everything you want us to be. And Father, we pray for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Lord, nothing is done unless you do it. So Father, we yield ourselves to you. We ask you to cleanse us and fill us and give us all the mind of Christ. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Okay, Brother Robert. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I don't know if everybody knows, but uh, Brother Stone's uh, nephew passed away, Charles Stone. I'm going to keep the Stone family in prayer. I don't know if he had a wife or anything I hadn't heard. He did? He did? Yeah. Okay. So let's pray for that yeah. family. Keep the Stone family in prayer. Can see Miss Debbie in the house? All right. Let's start off over here. Yes, ma'am. And I want to pray for Brenda. And also, I have an unspoken prayer. Anybody else over here on the right? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we need to keep praying for my sister, Glenda Harris. 
she's in the hospital now at Baylor Park Hospital at Plano, and they're having to wait till she gets better till they can do the heart procedure. And my sister Barbara Armstrong's barely out of the hospital in mm. Norman, Oklahoma. What's your other sister's name, Brenda? Glenda. And who? And the other Barbara. one? Barbara. 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 Yes, ma'am. Uh, I have a request and a praise. So uh, my request is for the Reynolds family. Uh, they have called in a family for Don Reynolds. And then uh, my praise is my nephew um, has, is out of ICU. Hey, Praise God. Hallelujah. Prayer does work. Yeah, right. What's the uh, matter with Mr. Don? Um, well, he has had cancer all over. Mm -hmm. And um, he just hasn't been doing well. But apparently Saturday they started calling in the family. Mm -hmm. okay. This is Don who? Reynolds. 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 Over here? Yes, ma'am. I have an unspoken. Yes, ma'am. Keep Ron on it. We, I have still not been able to get a hold of him. Mm. He's just, I don't know. Becky's tried to. I mean, we've all tried it. He stuck his head out the other day and kind of waved and said hi to somebody, but mm. he's in there, and so he won't He won't answer a text. And, okay. Yeah, I so. told him he needs to visit. Yeah. So. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Barbara. Uh, two praises. One for Terry. Uh, they were successful in getting the cancer off the kidney. Amen. And then uh, for Julie's mm -hmm. eye, they've operated on it, and it's just now in the recovery stage. She can't see out of it yet, but they said it'd be two to three months before she can see it. Are they doctors think it went well, though? Doctors said it went well. Good. Praise God. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. Praise my oldest brother's family. They just moved to Arkansas, and um, they just have some family stuff going on. Yeah, Josh, Josh, Josh King, and your mother lives up there, doesn't she? Mm -hmm. And now everybody's up there. Oh, right, but you're smart. You're keeping your distance. Don't even think about it. <laughs> We're not. It's all beautiful space. It is. It ain't Texas. But it ain't Texas. It's not Texas. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I also need uh, y'all to pray for our daughter-in-law, Hannah Franklin. She's facing um, maybe surgery, maybe two surgeries. <clears throat> okay. Is that it? Come on, Jody. Come on. All right, let's take it to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you again for this day. We yes. thank you, Father, for restoring us to a sound mind and to healthy bodies, Lord, for this opportunity to, to gather in your name. Father, we know in your word you tell us that where two or more come gathered in your name, that you are in our midst. And so we just thank you that yes. the Holy Spirit is with us, that you never leave us, you never forsake us. That's right. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to send these prayers before you. Yes. I know that you hear our prayers. You said that you hear the prayers of the righteous. Yes. And Lord, I know that we are in right standing with you. I yes. don't believe that there is an unrepentant sinner in the house. Mm -hmm. and so, Father, I thank you for that. I thank you for this yes. body of believers. And I lift them, each and every one of them up to you this morning, Father. And I ask that not only would you meet their needs, Lord, but you would fill them with the knowledge of your will yes. and all wisdom and spiritual understanding yes, in Christ Lord. Jesus. Yes. Father, I pray if there's anyone here that doesn't know you today or is not in right standing with you for whatever reason, Father, that, Lord, you would provoke their hearts, Father God, to confess that before yes. you, Father, to come to you in repentance, Father, and accept the forgiveness that you've provided. Yes, Father. Lord, we lift up the Stone family right now, Father, in this yes time of grieving, Lord. We also celebrate the homecoming of Charles, Father. Yes. And we pray for their family, Lord, that you just minister to them, that you would strengthen them. Yes. That, Lord, that you would fill the void left 
by the passing of Brother Stone. We lift up Anne, Lord, and her unspoken. We pray for her daughter Brenda, Father God, and the situation at home. That, Lord, that your will would prevail. That, Lord, your mercy would, Father, be extended to them. And, Lord, forgiveness. We lift up the, the Reynolds family, Father, and for uh, Don, Lord, who's, Lord, you know, has got cancer. And, uh, been fighting that battle, Father, Lord. At the end of the day, it's you're the judge. Yes. Lord, you decide who lives yes. and who passes yes. and how they go, Father. Lord, I pray that Don might know you and he might be saved. And Lord, in this, that somehow you'd be glorified. Yes. Yes. We pray, Father God, for Elizabeth's unspoken need. Yes. We lift up Brother Ron Person, yes. Father. And I ask, Lord, that you would Lord, help him. Lord, bring his mind out of the pits of uh, depression, Father. Yes. It sounds like he's kind of drifting off. I just pray, Father, that Lord, you would help us to help him, Lord. Yes. Send somebody. Send me, Father. Lord, I just lift up Brother Don. I pray that yes. Ron, that you would uh, bring healing, Father. Yes, Lord. We pray for Barbara's uh, unspoken, Father God. She has also, Father, uh, a praise. And we thank you for all the praises and the things that you've done. We lift up Israel, Father, who we know has been yes, under major attack. And I thank you, Father, for Lord, being a hedge of protection around Amen. them, Father. Thank you for your word, Lord, that you told us, Lord, that that's the apple of your eye. Yes, and we know you're not going to stand for somebody to poke you in the eye. That's right. And I just thank you, Father, for giving them wisdom, Lord, giving yes. them discernment for the yes. preemptive attacks that they were able to fend off. And Lord, we just thank you for them. We pray for peace in Jerusalem. Yes. We pray for wisdom for the leaders. Yes. We lift up the United States, Father, and pray for godly leaders. Leaders Amen. here. Yes, and Lord, you would cast out the corrupt and replace yes, with the righteous. That you would Amen. reign in the hearts of men in this nation, yes, Father. Yes, Father. Lord, we pray for Josh King. Lord, yes, this family, uh, Katie's family who's moved to Arkansas, Father. Yes, I pray that Lord, Lord you would guide them and Bless lead them to a uh, Holy Spirit filled Lord, church, Jesus, Father God. I pray, Father God, your blessings upon yes. the Stevens family, the King family, Father. Yes. We love them. We're so grateful to have them back with us, Father. We thank you. Yes. I ask you, Father, to move in mighty ways in their lives, Father. Yes. Lord. And glorify your name. Lord, we lift up Hannah Franklin, Father, and pray yes. that you would guide the surgeon's yes. hands. Yes. And that, Lord, in this, too, you would make yourself known to the doctors yes. or whoever is associated with this situation. I yes. again pray for this body of Christ here at Balsora, Father. Yes. And Lord, as we are a loving church, Father, we also sometimes are hurting each other, Father, with mm. the things we say. And I just pray that you would yes. unite us, Father God. Help and that each Lord. and every one here, Father, would seek your face and seek your will yes. instead of their own. Yes. Lord, start with me. It's yes. in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Proverbs, chapter 4. I think we're going to get done with it. Woohoo! <laughs> this time I'm going to start in the right spot, I hope. That's going to be 20. It's in the middle of the Bible. For me, it's on page, I don't know. I don't even have pages on here. 709. <laughs> or 857. Or 857. <laughs> Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. You'll find this is a common theme. The Lord is yes. saying, hey, pay attention. Focus. Listen to what I'm saying. Right? It's important. It's, it's, it's obviously very important because just about every verse we start starts with pay attention. Yes. Listen. God wants our attention. We need to pay attention to his word. He said, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. The heart being the mind is what you focus on. And if you'll ever notice, whatever you focus on is kind of the direction you go. Right? If you're walking or driving and you're looking over here, you're going to kind of head that direction. God wants us to keep His Word on the forefront of all that we think, all that we do. That's, what's, that's where He wants our heart to be. Yes. That's what He wants our focus to be. So taking your eyes off of Christ <coughs> is going to lead you astray. So it's so important that we keep our eyes on Christ. What is God saying? What is He doing? What has He done? Yes. Right? So it's easy for us to take our eyes off, especially in the, in the body of Christ. People come to church, a lot of times they might be hurting or whatever, and we continue to hurt them. And so we, want, we don't want to do that, right? Because what happens is they've taken their eyes off of Christ, the people that are hurting, and if we continue to hurt them, they're looking at the people that are hurting them. And that's how they're judging the body, and that's not right. That's right. 
So we want to stay focused on Christ. If you come to church looking for anything other than Jesus, you're going to be disappointed because we're people. Right. And we're going to fail. Yep. Right? But if we keep our eyes on Christ, if we focus on His Word, we're going to find out right here. It says here, uh, Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Keep them in your mind. For they are life to those who find them. That word is uh, the Hebrew word, and that means it is living. It is alive. It is active. God's Word is living. It is alive. It is active. And if we are listening and following God, then we're alive, living, and active in His Word, just like Jesus was. Does that make sense? Amen. Y'all understand that? So that's the focus. That's why we need to be living. Keep your heart, it says, and health to all their flesh. So for they are alive to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. His Word brings healing. Amen. It brings healing. So that in healing can be a comfort. If we're comforting one another in Christ, not condemning. Yeah. Right? right? It can be physical health. Uh, God's Word brings miracles in a lot of people's lives. It's been a miracle in my own. Amen. And so I can speak to those things. Uh, and not just me. I mean, uh, people have, God still does miracles in healing. Keep your heart with all diligence. That means with all your mind. Keep your focus with all that you can. With everything within you, focus on Christ. Amen. Don't focus on the world. Don't focus on the things around you. Focus on Christ. Yes. What did Jesus do? It says, uh, for out of it, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. I'm going to ask again, where's your heart at? Where's your heart at? Put away from you a deceitful mouth. And put perverse lips far from you. Put away from you a deceitful mouth. Don't be cantankerous. Don't be hard to get along with. I'm going to tell you right now, that's I, that's for me. He was speaking to me again this morning when I was looking at the It hurt a little bit. Uh, but that's, you know, I can be Robert, that way. Also, we need to tell the truth. Tell Don't, the truth. Tell the truth in love. Don't be deceitful. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Don't lie. Don't uh and don't be a flatterer, right? What's a flatterer? Flatterer, something that you're, yeah, somebody, I'm going to say something to your face that I wouldn't tell anybody else, right? That's not really how I think. Put away from you, put, put away from you a deceitful mouth and put perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Think about your past. Ponder your, the, the path of your feet. And let all your ways be established. Amen. That ponder is the word for ponder in that language in, in the uh, Hebrew when it was used was means to level out. It's like a balance, hmm. right? And so balance your way. If you want to have a, a, a level way, right? Make your way straight. And you keep your eyes straight, and that way you can keep that balance. If you go to the right or to the left, you're going to go this way. If you're going to go that way. You're going to get off course. It's kind of like a yoke, right? right. If you're yoked, you're not evenly yoked. One side of that yoke is going to be a problem for you and you'll end up plowing in a circle. Who wants to plow in a circle? It just gets tighter and tighter. So, ponder the path of your feet and let your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Just stay away from it. Stay in the right path. Stay righteous. Stay with God. Amen. Focus. Focus on Christ and what He's done, what He's doing in your life, what His direction is. For your life. And with that, I'll hand it over to Brother Eric. Amen. Thank you, Robert. Uh, good, morning. good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in Him. Uh, our songs that we're going to sing this morning are having to do with exactly that. And uh, we're going to start off with number 179. Number 179, Awesome God. Let's stand and sing that. We'll sing it through, uh, I guess, probably twice.
over to number 213. Number 213. That's 214. Number 213. We bring the sacrifice of praise. We'll sing it through twice.
thing along with it too. That's awesome. Alrighty then. We got any birthdays or anniversaries this last week? Okay. Are we going to wait for Carol or sing loud enough that you can hear us back there or make him come out here? Wake him up. Wake him up. Get him out here. Years, Carol. Christ and follow him. That's when it began for you. And it will never end. You know, we are eternal. And the main thing we need to share with those around us, they are eternal also. Death is not the end of anything. Death is simply a transition into eternity. And there will be those that are in eternity with God and following after Him. And there will be those in eternity that are in torment in hell. Now, people don't like to hear that today, and I certainly don't even like to say it. But it's imperative that we tell the truth in love. Because we go through this life one time. One time, and then comes judgment. And we know as far as judgment goes, God's not going to judge you according to your sins. If you have given your life to Christ, Christ's blood washes away every sin you will ever commit. Past, present, future. God knew it all. And when Jesus was on the cross, your sin 
was laid upon him. Amen. And the penalty for that sin was death. Jesus gave up his life so that we might have eternal life with him. And I'm here to tell you we are closer than we've ever been to the return of Jesus Christ. You know, all the things, and I've been preaching Bible prophecy for many years. I remember as a 10-year-old looking at Matthew 24 and just being transfixed by it. And God has never let me go as far as prophecy. I watch the news like a hawk, looking for prophecy to come about and look at what God is doing so I can share with y'all. Because a part of my responsibility is not only seeking and save that which is lost, but to grow the body of believers, to move us from being babes in Christ to maturity in Christ, and that we most of all love each other. You know what? I'm going to fail you. I've already failed some people in our church, and they got upset with me, and they left. You know, even I apologized and told them it was a mess up, but they chose to leave, and I understand that. But I will mess up. I'm an old man now. I remember some things. I forget a lot of things. And, you know, you might tell me your name here and over here. I can't remember your name. So, you know, I need grace just like you need grace. Amen. And we need to love each other and forgive each other when we mess up. And just like Robert said, we have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Because we're all going to mess up with each other. But if we keep our eyes on the Lord, we'll keep moving forward. And that's the main thing. And there is no church in our community that has perfect people. And all you have to do is join them and find out they're no better than we are. So, here we are then with Jesus mounting his mission to quicken the dead. Now, we know from God's word, everybody is dead in their trespasses and sins. We're going to keep our finger here in Luke, but turn over to Ephesians. Ephesians, which we all know this chapter, but it's good to remind ourselves of it. Ephesians chapter 2. And look at what it says. Verse 1. And you were dead in your trespasses and sin, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. So, we were dead because we were sinners. Everyone sins. We don't have to teach our kids how to sin, do we? No. You know, tell them not to do something, and you turn around, that's exactly what they're going to be doing. You tell them to leave the cake alone and you're going to see finger marks on that cake if you don't cover it up and get it away from them. Because we are sinners. We have a sin nature thanks to Adam. Adam and Eve opened the door for sin to permeate the whole world. And there was only one answer for our sin. It had to be someone that was sinless. Jesus came and lived a sinless life so that he would be able to bear all of our sins to Calvary. So Jesus paid it all. He made a way where there was no way. And soon and very soon, we're going to see him in the sky. We're going to rise up. You ever go on a plane trip and you look out at all the clouds and you start to think, you know what, one day we're going to be standing on those clouds. And we're going to walk up to Jesus. And he's going to welcome us into eternity. And before this old world comes apart at the seams, he's going to call us up in the air. It says Isaiah 26, he's going to take us into our rooms. And he says we're going to hide for a little while until indignation finishes its course. In other words, Jesus will then step out and judge the world with fury and wrath because they rejected the sinless Son of God who came and made a way for them to go to eternity. They literally had to step over Jesus to go to hell. And you and I both know, we know family members, we know friends that we try to witness to, we try to share with, 
and it's like water off a duck's back. They do not get it, they don't want to hear it, and they especially don't want to hear it from you. But you know what? That's the main thing. That's the main thing. And we need to lovingly share with them again and again and again. Their house is on fire. And if they don't get something done, they're going to burn up and that fire is never going to go out. And that's not me saying that. Jesus preached more about hell than anyone else in the Bible. Why do you think he did that? Because he didn't want anyone to go there. He wanted everyone to be saved. He did everything he could do to save each one of us. It's a free gift. You know, we think, well, if I had to pay $100,000 for salvation, I'd work night and day until I could get that $100,000 to be saved forever. He said, there's no need for that. You come and receive the free gift of salvation. And all we have to do is say, yes, Lord, yes. And then you say, Lord, I want to lay down that garbage life I've been living in, and I want to follow you all the days of my life. You know what? People are looking for joy. People are looking for peace. People are looking for satisfaction. It's all found in Jesus Christ. He's the one. He's the one we need to turn to. So it says, and you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world. Who is the prince of the power of the air? Satan. Satan. And is he the god of this world right now? Yes. yes, he is. Why do little babies get sick and die? Satan. Why do marriages become ripped apart and they hate each other? Satan. Satan loves to destroy people. Satan loves to rip families apart. Satan loves to dangle things in front of you and make you go this direction and that direction. He wants you to keep your eyes out of the Bible and off of Jesus Christ. But we know we can do all things how? Through Christ. Through Christ who strengthens us. Absolutely. That's the truth. So he says all this. And then he says, among them, verse 3, we too all formerly lived in the lust of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. You ever have trouble with your flesh lusting after things? <coughs> I do. I go to Walmart. And I get on the blue bell aisle and I start lusting after homemade vanilla ice cream. Let me confess, I broke down and bought me a half gallon of it here and I still got most of it, some of it in the fridge. We all have things that entice us. Maybe yours is in gambling. Maybe yours is in drinking. Maybe yours is in drugs. Whatever it is, we can give it to Jesus and he'll give us victory. Amen. The Amen. lust of our flesh. And then he says, we were raised up with him and has seated us with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ. So that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. And of course we know Ephesians 2, 8, 9, and 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith and the faith you have to believe in Jesus is not even of yourself. It is a gift of God, not by works lest any man should boast. So you're going to heaven with faith. You couldn't even conjure up enough faith to be saved. But what happened? God gave you the faith to believe in Jesus. God opened your eyes so that you would see him. Turn over to 2 Corinthians for a moment. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And let's look at what it says about the condition of those that are lost. 2 Corinthians 4, 3. And look what he says. He says, And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, 
who is the image of God. So, what's the condition of the world? They're blind. They don't even know it. They think they see. They think they know. They think they're on the right path. But you know what? Unless God intervenes, they're on the wide, broad road that leads to destruction. And most people are going that way. You know, how many born-again biblical Christians do you think there are in America today? You know, I would say 10% or less, myself. Now, God hadn't made me the official counter, but you know what? I can sure look around and I can look at these conventions we just had and hear all the garbage, hear people celebrating abortion. You know, it would be one thing if you had to have an abortion to save your life, and that's between you and God. But just because you didn't use birth control, that is not a good excuse to kill a little innocent baby. Yet alone celebrate it. You know, we celebrate anniversaries. We celebrate birthdays. We don't celebrate shedding innocent blood, no. do we? No. But that's where we're at as a society. That's how far we've removed ourselves from what God says. And I wish I could tell you there's going to be a great revival breakout and it's all going to get better. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says it's going to get dark and darker and darker. We're living in the days of Noah. We're living as all those people did back then. They all thought they were doing great, and God said, it's reached a point I'm going to have to destroy the whole earth. I'm going to have to drown everybody in it. But because God had so much grace, he gave him 120 years to hear Noah preach. And how many converts did he get? None. Just his family. So, let's start on back to Luke 5 then. Let's move on down through here. We'll be here forever. Okay, Luke 5 then, 29. And they got up and drove him out of the city, talking about Jesus, led him to the brow of the hill on which their city had been, had been built in order to throw him down. So I'm in the wrong deal here. 527. Okay, wait a minute. Got too many pages turned over. Okay. After that, he went out, noticed Matthew, noticed he was a man, called him to follow him. He left everything behind and got up and began to follow him. Now, you talk about a miracle. Here's a guy that's got it made. He's got it absolutely made. He's got a built-in income coming in. He's probably got one of the nicest houses in town. Jesus said, follow me, and he left it all. Can you imagine? Would you do that? You know, I've often asked myself that question. Would I leave everything and follow Jesus? I hope I would, and I hope I have, because that's what he asked us to do. Leave the world behind and come and get involved in eternal things. You know, what amount could you put on you leading one person to Jesus Christ? The salvation of one soul. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And Levi gave a big reception for him in his house. And there was a great crowd of tax collectors and other people who were reclining at the table with them. The Pharisees and the scribes began grumbling at his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and the sinners? Now, that's a good question. It is something that we would really have to ponder. Do we invite people that are living wicked lifestyles into our house? Do we have them as a part of the people we run around with? Would you go into their house if they're having a party and they're drinking and they're doing all sorts of junk? Would you go in and be in the midst of them? Nope. What would your brothers and sisters in Christ say about that? But Jesus did exactly that. He went after those wicked tax collectors. It? It's amazing. They're still the same today. <laughs> and, and they were getting rich. And then it says, but the Pharisees. Now listen who we sound like. The Pharisees and their scribes began grumbling at his disciples, saying, why do you eat and drink with the tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered and said to them, 
It is not those who are well who need a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Now, that's what we're supposed to be about. And they said to him, the disciples of John often fast and offer prayers. The disciples of the Pharisees also do the same. But yours eat and drink. So here they are contrasting the disciples who follow John and different ones, how they respond to the world they live in. Is that important? How would you feel if you caught me at Walmart walking out with two cases of Budweiser and a couple of jugs of wine? Would you say, boy, I don't think I want to go back to that church again. Well, you know what? It matters the way we live our life. And it matters who we hang out with. If you're a new Christian, I would say by no means hang out with people that drink and live wickedly. Because you know what? It's much easier for them to pull you down than for you to try to lift them up. And most strong Christians, mature Christians, have to be careful. Because we live in a world... Sinners love to get you involved in their wickedness. Have you ever thought about that? Yeah. They love company. They love dragging people down. All the while God's trying to lift you up, they're pulling on you to come down. So you need to pray about who you run around with and what you do with your life. It matters because every eye is watching each one of us. But Jesus went in their midst and was sharing the truth with them. And Jesus said to them, You cannot make the attendance of the bridegroom fast while the bridegroom is where is with them, can you? So in other words, they said that their disciples were, were not fasting. His disciples were not fasting because he was there. He said, When I leave, they'll have plenty of time to fast. Let me ask you a question. Do any of us fast? There are some in here that do. What compels us to fast? That's withdrawing from food and just getting a bare minimum while you're seeking the Lord. You know, when we get very sick, I would recommend that one of the very first things you do is fast and call upon the Lord. Get His attention. When you deny yourself things for Him, he looks at you a little closer and listens a little closer also. Be sure that you're fasting and fasting for the right reason. You don't walk around and say, oh man, I'm hungry. I've been fasting for two or three days now. I'm trying to get God to answer me and help me. You know, the first thing he says, don't tell anybody about it. Do it secretly. Do it to where the Lord sees it. And when he does, he'll answer your prayer. Now, God doesn't always answer prayers now, does he? No. Sometimes he takes a long time. Sometimes he says no, those dreaded words. So we just have to keep our eyes on him and trust in him. You know what? Without him, we're not going to make it to the finish line. Without him, we have no hope. But with him, we have great hope and great expectation. But the days will come, verse 35, when the bridegroom is taken away from them. Then they will fast in those days. And he was also telling them a parable, no one tears a piece of cloth from a new garment and puts it on an old garment. Otherwise, cloth from a new garment, uh, will he will both tear the new and the piece from the new will not match the old. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins, and it will be spilled out, and the skins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into fresh wineskins, and no one after drinking old wine wishes for new. For he says the old is good enough. Now, talking about our bodies like wineskins, Jesus is giving us new wine in a new wineskin. We must avail ourselves to the truth of the Lord and be willing to follow Him and walk with Him and mature and grow. How do we grow as Christians? 
You gotta have a steady input of God's word. You have to spend time with the Lord. You have to have a steady time of prayer every day. Have a time that you pray. Now, Katie, with all those kids, I don't know how you do it, Harley. You're afraid to shut your eyes. Pray with your eyes open, I guess. But it's the same with all of us. We have busy lives. And Satan wants to get us off track. But we have to keep our heart and our eyes fixed upon him. You know what? We're going to reach a season here to where we're fixing to go out. And God is going to use us and God is going to bless us. But we have to be willing to do what Fred said. you got to get up and do it. And hopefully that will be our attitude as we go forth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to our hearts. Father, we know we fall short, we mess up. Lord, but our heart wants to follow you. Our heart wants to walk in obedience to you. We want to live a life that glorifies your name. So, Lord, wherever we're at, help us to start from there and to spend time in your word and to spend time in prayer and to take one step at a time as we move forward to your sure and glorious return. Father, we love you. We thank you that you're building your church at Balzora. Lord, we all fall short, but we thank you for all the glorious plans you have for us in the days to come. Lord, maybe there's someone here this morning, and they know that you want them to belong to this body of believers. You want them to join fellowship with us. You want them to take part in what you're going to do at Balzora. Father, we pray that they would get up and come to the front and give their lives to you and follow you here. Lord, maybe there's others in this room. They're not even sure should you come back today that they go to be with you. Father, I pray today it might be the first day of the rest of their life that you might open their eyes and hearts to you, that you might pour fresh wine into fresh wine skin. And begin the glorious work of maturing them into all that you have planned for them to be. Father, you know every heart. You know every need. Lord, we give you this time to glorify your name. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, let's stand. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation. Number 479. Number 479. Softly and tenderly. <laughs> <clears throat> Softly and tenderly Jesus is calling Calling for you and for me See the portals he's waiting and watching Watching for you
Okay. I know we don't have a place right now, and I'm not talking about starting next week. I'm talking about when we get in the new building. Oh, yeah, we'll start it. We'll okay. get, we, we get that started. Yes. And just, just if you want, if you're interested in, it, just let me know or Sonny or somebody. Yeah. So we know whether there's interest or not. Amen. All right, and yes, I forgot to ask for prayer. Linda and I will be gone next week to my school reunion. All oh, right. I'm still there. Wow. <laughs> right. Is that up in Pampa? How many, how many years? <laughs> How many years? Oh gosh, I can't even. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't learn to count that high in school. She only went to school for 12 years, okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll be praying for Linda and Ann as they make that trip. Yeah, Becky. Uh, Cindy was in the red Tom in 602. Okay. She's in 607, right? 602. 602, okay. 602. Yeah. So anyway, you get a chance, slide by. I know she'd love to see you, and I'm going to go next week. So, Okay, any other announcements? Yeah, sure. If anybody hasn't checked your names and your information on this contact list, I would appreciate it if you did on one of these copies today. And if I missed your name for some reason, add it on here. I've got some empty blanks on some of these. Okay, great. And we appreciate Sharon doing that and everybody yes, filling out the information you. that way because I know I have a hard time getting a hold of some of you because I don't have your number. Okay, anybody else? Yes, Fred. You know, we could be in our new building in just a short 35 days. We sure could. Yeah. We better be getting ready. We're getting ready. We're going to get things lined up. We're going to have the committee meetings. We're going to get everything lined up and then we're going to move forward. And if you have any ideas or suggestions, you can give them to me or you can give them to one of the deacons and they'll bring it forward. Any any other? Let's stand. We're going to be dismissed. Uh, Eric? All right, one last song. Number 107, Lord, I lift your name on high. Sing it through one time. Lord, I lift your name on high.